meet this young man. And uh, I went to Florida to meet, be with him. I went to St. Louis to be with him. But this is an opportunity that you all are going get, to get to hear someone who actually know what they're talking about. A lot of times we talk, you know, most of us don't even know what we talk, we just talk, you know, just to be talking. But the one and only, the man of the hour, my man, my brother, my leader, O'Malley Yes of the Who knows? That's the greeting that we use in our movement. Uhuru is Swahili for freedom. So we use this word to greet each other. You call our office anywhere in the world, you'll be greeted with Uhuru. When we leave each other, we say Uhuru. We say Uhuru in Swahili, and it means freedom. And we say Uhuru because we think that freedom should be on the minds of African people 24 hours a day. And everything that's happening here in Benton Harbor is evidence of the significance of this ongoing, never-ending struggle to be free as a people. Because that's what this struggle is about. So I want to, first of all, unite with Brother Sam, who lauded the significance of the good Reverend Pinckney here in terms of what he has been involved in and what you are involved in too, because we're on the front line. This struggle here, I have to be here, first of all, because the Reverend called me, and uh, you have to come when the Reverend calls. That's right. and, uh, 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 and that's extremely important for me. Uh, to be here for that reason. And because of the critical issue that's being dealt with here, I'm glad to hear the bishop state that we're not talking just about Benton Harbor. Fact is, we're not just talking about the state of Michigan. Right. This is a serious contradiction that black people, African people, all around the world and other colonized and oppressed people experience and suffer from daily. That's why the world that we live in today, we talk about poverty and oppression here in Flint and in, in, in Benton Harbor, but the reality is that on this earth that we live on today, on this earth, 80% of the people on the planet earth are trying to survive of less than 10 US dollars a day. And 50% of the people on earth are trying to survive of $2.50 or less a day. And if you're in Africa, you find yourself working all day just for a single meal. This is the reality that we are confronted with as oppressed people and the nature of the social system that we are dealing with. And this social system is not a bit and horrible social system. It's not a Michigan social system. In fact, it's global. So I want to appreciate, first of all, Brother Sam for what he has said about the significance of this struggle and what he has said about the good Reverend Pinckney. Because Pinckney has always said, when you're in trouble, what you do? Call oh. Pinckney. <laughs> Call Pinckney. Yeah. And so what happened is Pinckney called me. And so that's why I have an opportunity to be here with you all today. Also, I want to appreciate Brother Sam for introducing us can you stand up, sister? Yes, the good councilwoman. What is your name again, sister? Mary Waters. Mary Waters. I'm glad to meet Mary Waters. We heard her story. Yes. We just heard the bishop, and we saw these other extraordinary black women, African women who have taken the leadership, taken their rightful place in history, in the struggle to create the future, side by side with African men. Not as somebody who follows behind or something to that effect. Not as somebody who's behind the man. This traditional thing that we hear. But taking their rightful place as leaders and as makers and shapers of history. So I want to appreciate that. And then secondly, thirdly, about Detroit. Because Detroit is being punished. It's being punished because at one time 
It was understood that Detroit was the most progressive black city in this country. Yes, that's right. It was the most progressive politically yeah. in this yeah. country, Detroit. Right. Uh -huh. And the African people in Detroit had made and had was making extraordinary struggles there. I remember the original Ken Cockrell. Right. I'm not talking about the one that's now. Right. Yeah. I'm talking about Ken Cockrell, my man. You know, this extraordinary lawyer, I won't tell you all the things that he did. Uh, Y'all know why he was charged with contempt of court on one occasion, don't you? Where he walked into the courtroom and he called the judge. Y'all don't remember that? Well, I'm not going to tell you because there was some profanity involved in what he called it. But Cockrell is the one who, when a worker in one of the plants took his carbine, and walked into the plant and shot the foreman. Cochran defended him uh, on the basis that as a worker who was oppressed in that plant, he was driven crazy uh, by the system and he beat the case. He beat the case. And so, so this is Detroit. Detroit is the place where, in Reverend uh, Aretha Franklin's daddy, in his church, where people from the Republic of New Africa were meeting in the church. You remember that saying? Yeah. And meeting in the church. And the police came upon that building and attacked them. And a shootout occurred and they shot a couple of the cops and what have you. And before they got to the jail, the judge, a black man, right there in Detroit, went to the jail and freed everybody. Judge this Judge Crockett. Mm -hmm. This was Detroit. This incredibly powerfully political, political city of black people is being punished ever since. When you look at much of what's happened to Detroit, you're looking at a, a, a city that's being punished because of the leadership that's been there by black people. So I want to appreciate Sam and the sister here, because I've read about you too. Uh, just the work that you've done, reparations and other things that you've pushed there in Detroit. I was glad to hear Jerry, because Jerry was one of the ones who talked about how it didn't just start now. He talked about a system. Mm -hmm. He talked about how foul, rotten the system of capitalism is. It didn't just get foul and rotten, and, and Benton Harbor didn't just happen. It's a social system, and the social system was born as a global system. This was not a Michigan contradiction. This was not a contradiction in England. It was global, but how did they get global? Somebody who Jerry believes in. His name was Karl Marx. Mm. He, talked, he talked about this process mm -hmm. that gave birth to the capitalist system. And, and, and critical to that, he said, was turning Africa into a war in, for the commercial hunting of black skins. Then that's said, that's what he said. He called it primitive accumulation. He said Marx was wrong. That was not primitive accumulation. That was a mode of production that was being introduced to the world. It was the enslavement of African people and the colonization of black people and other oppressed people around the world. This is the foundation that the whole capitalist system sits on. Wouldn't be any capitalism if they hadn't stolen this land that's now called America. Yeah. Wouldn't be any capitalism if they hadn't stolen black people and brought us here so that they can kill us with bad water, so that they can kill us in all the other ways that they're talking about here. Yeah. Didn't just get started. It's the nature of the system itself. We're talking about a system where half of Mexico was stolen at gunpoint. Here you hear this hypocrisy, these hypocrites claiming that they are murdering people in Ukraine and Russia because somehow Putin is this evil person who's initiated and created this, this, this heroic man, Zelensky, who was put in power by the CIA. The government in Ukraine was put in power by the CIA who overthrew the legitimate government in 2014. And they put somebody in power who would do what they would want them to do. Somebody said, we don't have a dog in this fight. Yes, we do. And the dog in this fight started in 2000, in 1917. At the time, this is when the war against Russia began. In 1917, when the Russian Revolution happened, 1918. All the colonial powers in the world invaded Russia, including Japan and the United States. 
And they've been attacking Russia since that time. And they succeeded in overturning or, 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 or undermining the socialist system that had been created there. But even having done that, it hasn't been good enough because Russia has been able to enter into modern history on its own terms. It didn't come into modern history like the rest of the capitalist system came into modern history through colonialism, through stealing black people, through taking the land of the indigenous peoples here and all of the other stuff that's happened. We're talking about the, the water here. We're talking about our people being killed. No explanation given for it. Well, we live in a country and a world where one out of every eight human beings on the planet Earth who's in prison is a black person in this country. This is what we are talking about. More people in prison in this country than any country in the world. More people in prison here than in China with more than a billion people. So we've got more than a million Africans in prison. There are more Africans in prison in this country than there are people in some countries. Did you know that? This is the nature of the social system itself. Capitalism is foul. But how could it not be foul if it was born of genocide? If it was born of the enslavement of Africans and other people around the world, it had to be foul. Yes, sir. So we're talking about land. We're talking about the land and steal the land. Uh, and now you have this PGA, the people, rich person sports, playing golf and other things at the expense of us, mm -hmm. at the expense of the other peoples around the world. Those are people who don't even get spoken of unless they're in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, these are indigenous people here. They live in concentration camps that are euphemistically referred to as Indian reservations. This is the America that we are to believe is somehow leading all of the original colonial powers in the world in this war against Russia and somehow these are the good guys fighting against Putin and Russia and the bad guys. Oh, well we used to be, co we used to be vulnerable to these kinds of lies, but that's no longer the case. And part of the reason that's not the case is because of heroic figures like Reverend Pinckney, who they put in prison because he's trying to represent our people. But isn't that the history? He survived up to now, but Sam is right. They got bullseye on his forehead, on his back. They killed Malcolm. They killed King. They killed 30 members of the Black Panther Party in 1968 alone. They assassinated Fred Hampton. This is what they do. They kill the Mumba they kill in Africa. Mm -hmm. They overthrew and then kill uh, uh, Nkrumah in Africa. This is what they kill Chavez uh, from Venezuela. And so what has happened is a global system, the thing that stitched the whole world together into a single world economy was slavery and colonialism. And this is the thing that, that this is the emergence of white power. This is where it came from. I mean, you're talking about a world where between the four short years of 1347 and, 50, 13, and what is it, 1347 and 1342, 3742, is that right? Yeah, four short years. Half the white people on the planet Earth died. Did you know that? A plague. They used to call it the Black Plague. But we ain't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> there you go. You can't lose half a population. You can't lose half a population and still have a viable economy. How did Europe rescue itself? I'll tell you how Europe rescued itself and what informed. I'm going to stop now, Reverend. No, you, 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 go ahead, you. And, you, you, and, you, and, you and what, what kicked it off? Uh -huh. In 1328, just some few years before the plague happened in Europe. In 1328, a black man named Mansa Musa. <coughs> Poverty is not something that we invented. It is not something that naturally comes to Africa and African people. 1328, Mansa Musa left Mali in West Africa with an entourage of 60,000 people 
60,000 people on horses and camels on the way to Mecca with gold, distributing gold all the way in this process. And it wreaked havoc in some places because the price of gold plummeted because he was putting so much gold out. This is a black man. And that was in 1328. You hear the stories they tell us in school about the inspiration that sent the so-called, what do they call it, this age of exploration, that Europeans had this, this intellectual itch that they wanted to go out and see what was on the other side of the world. No, no, they wanted to find out where that gold was coming from that Mansa Musa traveled with. And especially after this plague that had destroyed the economy of Europe. Where the hell did that? That's where Prince Henry the Navigator out of Portugal said, let's put some ships together. Start plying on the coast of Africa and what have you. And then this is where you see the emergence of the whole slave trade beginning in 1415 by the Portuguese and what have you. This is where the wealth that Marx called primitive accumulation came from that we say was a mode of production unto itself. This is what built the world economy that we're living with today. But guess what? No people on the face, on the face of the earth will live under colonial domination voluntarily. No people will sacrifice the future of their children voluntarily in order to do this, to make it work. Extreme violence is necessary. Yeah. Ubiquitous violence that happens to permeate every aspect of our lives as a people and all the colonized people of the world. This is why you see this series of unending wars that's happening. This is why America is in Syria, uh, killing and attacking people in Venezuela, starving people in Cuba, and all these other places and attacking Russia today because of this, because of the nature of the social system that is parasitic. You know what a parasite is, don't you? A parasite is like a tapeworm. Uh, sometimes if you eat a little rotten meat, and too many of you eat it, uh, and you eat this meat, and sometimes there's this this larva, this worm that's in the meat, and it attaches itself to your intestine. You might have worked real hard to get that food that you just ate. You cooked it, the parasite didn't cook it. You cooked it. You ate it. And all the parasite did was to attach itself to your intestines. No matter how hard you work, you don't get no bigger. Parasite don't do no work. It just live off you. Yeah. Just bigger and bigger and bigger. Come on, come on. This is the nature of this social system. Born of slavery. Born of colonialism. This is the emergence of what people refer to as white power. White nationalism has its origin there. This is where it comes from. And so now we are looking at it, how it expressed itself in this place we call, we call Benton Harbor. The reason we call it Benton Harbor is because the genocide that was committed against indigenous people who were here before. Ah. This is part of the colonial mode of production that we are talking about that gave rise to capitalism itself. It's a foul system. Mm. It can't do anything right. Yeah. So you might not know all the details, yeah. but if America did it, go the other way. If America said it's true, you know it's a lie. See, I know it's a lie. I got to get the details later, but America said it. And here's what we are talking about. We're talking about police murder throughout this country. Joe Biden's supposed to be your friend. But Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, and the Clintons. Biden wrote the so-called omnibus crime bill in 1994 that put... 100,000 policemen in the streets of this country and when Clinton is the one who carried that program out and everybody knew he was speaking in what was supposed to be code, but we knew it, just like we knew when, when Trump said, make America great again, we knew he was trying to make America white again, right? And so when Clinton said he was going to put 100,000 policemen in the streets of this country, all of us knew he was talking about putting them there to deal with us. Yeah to live with us. And so now we got all these people who are dying and the people who are locked up in these prisons 
We got a, a more than 800% growth in the number of people who are in prisons today. And it's a consequence of us being colonized and living under the hammer here. So are you surprised we got bad water? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> say it, say it. And you must understand, and I'm gonna get out your way. That's why I said we are on the front line here. That's why I gotta be here with yeah, you, Reverend. I appreciate you. And you just call me, I'll be here. I, I appreciate you. But not just here, brothers and sisters. This is really important for us. Mm -hmm. African people, we say Uhuru because it is Swahili. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it is African. Because we must remember. Yes. Because you cannot get on a boat in Africa in 1619 as an African and then get off in Jamestown, Virginia as a Negro. <laughs> If we were Africans when we got on the boat, we had to be Africans when we got off the boat. You understand? You don't have to go to school to learn that. You go to school to unlearn that. That's just ordinary common sense. Anybody tell you that? Unless that was one of them things that Spock was connected to on Star Trek or something like that. But if it was an ordinary ship, that we got a Reverend, you know, you, this is your expertise mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't the ship that uh, Jonah fell off and was swallowed by the big fish, <laughs> right? If it wasn't the ship that Noah uh, worked on, uh -huh. uh, the ark, if it was an ordinary ship, yeah. when we got on it as Africans, we, when we got off it, we were Africans who would say, well, that was a long time ago. Yeah. We ain't Africans no more, we used to be Africans. How does that work? Yeah. And you need to tell me, because I want to tell all my friends uh, who at the United Nations at these embassies from Africa uh, that you can be here a long time uh -huh. and then you turn into a Negro. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what's the use by date on that. What's the use by date? Uh -huh. by, by, by which when did you turn into a Negro? You uh -huh. understand? Let everybody know you better get out of town because June 36th, June 30th, you're going to be a Negro, right? Uh -huh. But the reality is it doesn't work that way. And we had a saying, Reverend, some time ago in Africa, you can go to the forest and you can cut down a tree and you can take all the branches from the tree and then drag it and put it in the river. You can leave that tree in the river for a thousand years and it will never turn into a crocodile. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We were Africans when we got on the ship, we were Africans when we get off. Yeah. Right. Now confusion happens is because first of all, they call themselves Americans mm -hmm. and that's what we call settler colonialism. Mm -hmm. Settlers come from somebody else. They take the land from the people. Settlers left Europe, went to a place in Africa, and then took the land and scratched the name off, and then called it, called it Rhodesia, and then called themselves Rhodesians, yeah. and then act like they've always been there. Right? Yeah. Settlers leave Europe, uh, go to a place called Palestine, take the land, Take the land, scratch the name off. Call it Israel. Yeah. Call themselves Israelis and act like they've always been there. Uh -huh. That's settler colonialism. Settlers who take territory, take lands from people and then destroy the memory of the people because they have the power. They're the ones who set up schools. They're the ones who do all these other things that help to inform the world what it is about. Well, there's a new day. Got a new sheriff in town. There you go. Raise a fish, sheriff. All right. right. It's new going sheriff down. in town, right? It's going it's down. Going down. That's, That's right. It's going, it's going down. down. So I just wanted to say that because I think it's really important. Jerry introduced this issue that we understand that what we're dealing with is a system and it cannot be reformed. There's no way. I don't care what. What this guy, what's his name is, Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Who talked about so kind of socialism. Yeah. I don't know what kind of socialism he's talking about. Yeah. And socialism under his, the way he sees it is something where you can get 15,000 hours over a number of years and some other kind of stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that ain't no socialism. Yeah. Socialism is the time when the people who produce the wealth, produce the value, yeah. take the power. And then it is no longer something that's privately owned by corporations who will pay you this or that if they want to, pay you uh, what they think you need just enough to live to the next day to come to work. 
When the workers take the power, yeah. we take it from the capitalist system. Uh -huh. And then if Bernie works right, yeah. he might make $15 an hour under the leadership <laughs> of the workers. That's real socialism. That's right. And to get right. to real socialism, you have to remember uh, that the social system that we are looking at uh, rests upon a foundation of colonialism, world colonialism, black people, brown people, other people around the world who exist for the purpose of creating value for a minority of the human population and for a minority on top of that minority who controls, owns and controls all the resources. We sit down with PGA, we say water is a human right. That's right. It's crazy that they have to be talking about having to buy water. Right, right. Water is a human right. right. The capitalist yeah. system will yeah. sell you water, uh -huh. sell you air. Yeah. Uh, apples come on the tree, yeah. sell you the apple, yeah. sell you anything that's yeah. provided by nature. That's the way the system is. But one man, his name is V.I. Lennon, he talks about the vulnerability of the capitalist system and the capitalist. Uh -huh. He said, because the capitalist will sell you the rope to hang them with. Yeah. That's the nature of the social system itself. Everything is driven by profit, yeah. nothing by the people. They lie, they lie, they lie, and, and, and lying is a policy of the social system. It's no accident. You don't just have a bad person there. It's the policy of the system itself. It's based on lies and treachery. Yeah. So, Good Reverend, I want to appreciate you for having me, giving me the opportunity to speak to these incredible forces. And the only final thing I want to say is this, is that we're involved in a struggle and it's incredibly it's important for Africans to understand this. Because all around the world, we're treated like minorities. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that if you start looking at Brazil, Jamaica, Haiti, if you look at the numbers of Africans in Europe, the numbers of Africans in South America, you look at the numbers of Africans in the United States, we're a billion and a half strong. Mm -hmm. The problem is, mm -hmm. it's been spoken of before, is organization. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey understood mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and built an organization of black people, 11 million strong that stretched across the planet and included Australia and India. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 11 billion people strong. That was Garvey's, uh, 11 million, that was Garvey's organization. We're a billion and a half strong. As once we get some clarity, mm -hmm. and takes clarity to achieve the kind of organization we need. Mm -hmm. Somebody said it up here before, nothing can stop us. That's right. So I just want to thank you and leave you with one other slogan. I gave you Uhuru, can you remember that? Uhuru. 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 Uhuru means freedom. Let me leave you with another slogan. It's easy way to e Africa. It's a call and response. You know that's what we do, right? Do that in church. Don't we do it, yes, yes, we do. Call and response. Easy way late to. It, it means the land is our. Yeah. E Africa means Africa. Yeah. We say Africa is our land. That's what the slogan means yeah. when we say it together. Don't run from Africa. Yeah. That's extraordinary. It's the richest continent on the planet Earth, 12 million square miles. But guess what? We would do work in Sierra Leone where we had to bring drinking. We had to create rainwater har harvesting there. They, the water question, they take the water there, they take the water here. Everything that we need as colonized and oppressed people, they control it. We have to take back our own control. We want justice. We get justice by making our own justice. We become self-governing. We free ourselves from a rotten, foul social system that cannot exist without exploiting, oppressing, and taking us and all the other peoples around the world. So I just wanted to say, I say he's related to, and you say he's Africa. I say E Africa, you say he's related to. See how easy it is? You didn't know you spoke Zulu, did you? <laughs> so, he's related to. E Africa. Okay. Yeah. So, Reverend, uh, this is not Catholic Church, is it? Uh, no. Okay, I'm trying no. to get why with no. this kind of response. No. I'm trying yeah. to get this. Uh, uh, <laughs> I understood it. We're Catholic. Ease, we're late too. E Africa. E Africa. E we're late too, E Africa. Brothers and sisters, thank you, good Reverend. Thank you for inviting me. Let's mark. All right. Let's All right. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Where can you find that road? Yeah, you know. Know. We can be building it right now. Oh, you know it, boy. You know it. You know that's what I do. You know I don't even have to tell y'all. All right.